Gisela says hi. We'll start here in a bit, Gisela. So hello from the Houston Humane Society. Elizabeth, a veterinary technician at Houston Humane Society, and here is our girl Lizzie. Aw, she's so cute. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so let's start it. Explain to me some of the tools that you might need for grooming. So a lot of uh, easy, simple things that you can get from the pet store, sometimes you can go over the counter at are going to be your basic brushes. So one of the most basic and easy to get brushes is going to be a double toothbrush. Um, this one is going to be soft bristle. This is going to be for dogs with shorter hair, dogs that don't have a lot of curls. And then you have kind of your pointy side of the brush. This is going to be used for your curlier dogs, um, your long coat dogs, dogs like that. That's a really simple one. Then you're going to have your deep Terminator. This is a big tool. It kind of, if you're familiar with horses, it gets all of the long hair off. Um, this is for, for mostly curly hair dogs, long hair dogs like huskies or shepherds. Another thing that we like to use is a flea comb. In the state of Texas, we have an awesome parasite called fleas, um, and they can live underneath the skin, kind of at the very baseline of where the fur meets the skin. This is super fine tooth so that it'll take out all of the fleas or live fleas or dead fleas on your coat, on your pet's coat. Another thing that we can get over the counter are nail trimmers. So nail trimmers are, they come in a different, a couple different kinds of sizes, shapes, and ways you can cut the nails. This one is gonna be the best one you can get over the counter if you're basic grooming um, or if you're just trying to maintain short nails. It has a little stop here That'll help you so you don't do what we call quick the nail. Quicking a nail just makes it bleed like a cuticle would if you were at the nail salon. So these are really, really helpful. The other type of nail trimmer is called a guillotine trimmer. Um, these are a little bit more dramatic and should be used if you're an experienced groomer. These, it's hard to see where the quick, um, where the quick meets the dog's foot. So I recommend, again, only using these if you've groomed before. Um, another thing that we have are trimmers. Trimmers are gonna help de-shed and you know, bring down our coat size a little bit, especially in the hot uh, summer. So this has a little guard on it so we don't trim her all the way down to baldness. Those are kind of some of the basic tools. All right, awesome. Okay, so let's start with if we wanted to cut Lizzie's nails. Mm -hmm. Can you show us exactly the technique to cut your dog's nails? Absolutely. So. You're gonna wanna partner if you can. Sometimes it's easier to have your dog spill when you're trimming the nails. So powder is gonna help if you quick a dog or if you make them bleed a little bit, 
this powder will stop the bleeding with pressure. So it's really nice to have, a nice little tool. And it's super cheap over the counter. You can get it for five bucks for this big container. Wow, interesting. Okay, so then what you'll do is you have one partner hold Lizzie's head, just kind of giving her some love. And the other person will go ahead and extend the toes. And you'll kind of see here, so the quick is gonna be that pink part. It kind of looks like a cuticle in humans. So if you were to look at your nail, it's that pink part. You don't wanna cut that. So with this, you'll get your nail trimmers and you're gonna face that stop away from the dog and you're gonna pick a nail and you're just gonna slowly start trimming. See? Super easy, not all dogs hate their nail trims. I haven't met one that likes it yet, so it may take a little bit of time to get it down to where you want. Now this is good because you haven't quicked her. She still has a little bit of her nail left, which will give her some traction when she's running. Um, and it'll also file down naturally if she's an outdoor dog or um, if they're on the you know, pavement. If they're not, if they're mostly indoor, you can get a file, just a simple nail file over the counter and you can file down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Aww, good girl. And you'll just repeat that step through all of the nails until they're nice and short because long nails can cause breakage and then breakage you'll have to come into the clinic to see us and we don't want to see you for that. Joseph says hold in there Lizzie. Yeah <laughs> thank you Joe that's She's sweet. So good. Another big tool that you can have are little little treats. Now you don't want to give them too much because they might bring them right back up but you can reward them ever so often for being really good like Lizzie. Definitely. part about nail trims is the dew claw. So the dew claw, not on all dogs, but on some, lives kind of where the be. Um, this dew claw can be a little longer in the quick area, so sometimes it's better to leave it, but this one we can trim just a, like that. So there's one foot. You did very, very good. One foot good. And her tail is definitely waggy for those <laughs> treats. <laughs> all right. not to cook them and just look out for that pink part. making sure we don't trim them too short. Yeah, and when you're gonna trim, what direction do you go? You normally go against the hair. That is okay. just to help with, again, not trimming them too short, um, and then not <laughs> cutting them at all. So. Okay, good girl. I know. And where in your house is a good place to do this? Anywhere that you have floors that are easily to clean, so any type of wood floor, tile, ceramic, things like that, um, and anywhere near a bathroom would probably be the best. And you, you're not holding it right up against her. You're going at a little bit of an angle to help you, again, not go too close to the skin. I know. And are these specific trimmers for 
dogs. These are, however, you can get them over the counter. You can get them, you know, Walmart, Target. They have them in the men's department. Okay. Um, and you can just make sure that they come with different settings. Now, on trimmers, you want to make sure that it says 40. These don't say it, but it'll say 40 and 10. The 10 setting is going to be a bigger blade and longer blade. That'll help you with fur like Lizzie's that's long and curly or shepherds, things like that, that need that grooming a little more often. Now the 40 is going to be a shorter blade like this. It's even a little smaller and that's going to get areas like the mouth, nose, areas that are going to be prone to getting little crusties and boogers and things like that. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect size for her back when we add that little extension. personality because they're, if they're good like Lizzie you can do it a little more often um, I would say anywhere from about one to two months for the heavy grooming such as trimming and shaving yeah. um, especially during the summer months in Texas because they can get very hot for those thick coat dogs um, but as far as nail trims and teeth brushing and ear cleaning about you know every month or so okay <laughs> As far as trimming around her face with the clippers, I normally don't recommend because they are like little moving targets. Mm -hmm. So using the um, salon grade, pet salon grade trimmers like this with a partner is going to be the best thing for getting around their eyes, nose, and mouth if they have those crusties. Definitely. Hey, Evie. Oh, okay. You ready to get washed, Lizzie? She's like, no, thank you. <laughs> So how often should you be bathing your dog? So that's kind of a hard question because again, it's like, you know, your breed and their temperament for mm -hmm. sure. But you really should be bathing them um, no more than every two weeks or so. Because if you bathe them too much, um, their normal flora on their skin will be disrupted, which can cause the adverse reaction of a skin infection um, or even, you know, enhanced allergies, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. So while Lizzie's getting her little bath, let's go check out one of our adoptable dogs in our backyard. Bye Lizzie, we'll be right back. <laughs> tennis ball. Patrick's personal favorite is the squeaky soft one. Now when I'm teaching fetch to a dog, I always have two toys in hand. Now we've been playing all day, but he's pretty tired already. <laughs> always have two toys in hand, so when you throw one and then bring it back, you have another to offer them so that they'll drop the first. Okay. There he goes. And always
always remember. Um, it has to be the toy that they like. And <laughs> and it's okay that he didn't come directly back to you, no, no. but he did come back. He did come back. So you want to make sure. Um, so what if? Not... And what if your dog, you know, goes to the toy, gets it in their mouth, and runs around and doesn't come back to you? So that's why I have the second toy. Oh, to lure him the, in. The second toy is not over, not only an offering, but it's a lure. And that's how they learn um, basically the recall of the play. Got it. Bad big man. <laughs> and remember, any positive interaction needs to be treated. For Patrick in particular, he doesn't need treats um, because just the idea of having the toy and playing with it is a treat for him. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget that you are a big part in this game as well. Mm -hmm. You want to make it fun for them. You know, we're not just going to hand them the toy and it's not. You, you want to make it fun. <laughs> Aww. So that always helps with fetch. Yeah. And then, of course, as time goes along, you can increase your distance and your dog will start to learn um, to bring it back no matter what the distance is. <laughs> But good I wore boy. our boy out pretty good. Aww. <laughs> so what else does Patrick like to do? Patrick loves everything. Um, he loves cuddling. He loves playing fetch. He loves just chewing on a toy. And he really likes to play with kids. He loves kids of all ages. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and he is available. Definitely. He has a great smile. He does. And red seems to be his color. <laughs> oh, good boy. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, Patrick, for letting us check you out. You're looking great mm -hmm. today. He's showing off. All right. Have fun playing fetch, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Thanks. All right. Patrick is so cute. Hope you guys can visit um, the shelter if you're looking to adopt. Now is a great time. Now let's go check in with Lizzie and see how she's doing. All right, let's head back and check out Lizzie. Hello guys, how did the bath go? It went, we didn't love it, but she, she got a treat, so it worked. Good. <laughs> oh, she looks great. Yeah. Well, good too. Yeah. And so, when we're grooming our dogs at home, I wanted to ask, can you use human shampoo or soap? It's not recommended. The only time you would is if they had a flea infestation, mm -hmm. then you would be using a Dawn dish soap, something along those lines, to try and kill the fleas. But normally, in a good grooming situation, you want to use something that is dog-related or cat-related. Mm -hmm. So anything, I mean, even the normal brands that people get, like Bird's yeah. Bees, you can get um, a waterless dog shampoo, a normal dog shampoo, things like that. Um, even when you go, again, to Target or Walmart, they have a whole section where you can get uh, shampoos associated with dog coats and cat coats. It's good for their normal form. And is it, if you do have a dog with hair like Lizzie's, should you be, how often should you be brushing it? Pretty often. Now the curls can become matted, and I did start pulling out some of the mats, but there's a good one back here. These just accumulate because the curls are growing, and if they're not brushed out normally, they'll just keep growing into themselves and become knots. When dogs mm -hmm. itch at them, they become knots and they can become a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So using that, again, waterless shampoo or regular shampoo, they even make dog detangler. You can do that a couple times a week just mm -hmm. to kind of spot treat, so yeah, like that. Do you need to use dog uh, conditioner? You don't have to. Now, I always have recommended doing that just because in some coats they may have, um, you know, harder to handle hair or fur than mm -hmm. others. And using a conditioner maybe once every other grooming would help to maintain a healthy coat. Okay. And what about cleaning ears? So cleaning the ears, how um, do we do it? So it's really, really easy. How you do it is you'll have 
a good dog like Lizzie sits so for you. You'll flip over the ear. Some dogs have those pointy ears, so they're already flipped up. You'll open the ear canal like that. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have your... What are you using? There? This is an ear cleaning solution. Now, okay. this is a veterinary practice kind, so it can only be bought with um, a veterinary practice. Mm-hmm. But you can get these over-the-counter um, oatmeal-based, you know, regular pH-based mm-hmm. to help maintain um, normal, healthy ears. Um, but you'll just take that and you'll pour it into the ear canal. Mm-hmm. And then close the ear canal with your hands. And squish it around. I know. Just squish it around. Mm-hmm. And then you let them shake it out. And she'll yeah. shake for us. Do you shake? No? And how often should you be cleaning your dog's ears? So that is, again, kind of a, a tricky question because mm-hmm. if they're prone to ear infections, you're going to want to do it as um, recommended by your veterinarian. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for normal ears that haven't had any issues, you can do it once every grooming. Um, but definitely checking... Um, every week to look and make sure that your dog's ears are normally clean is something that I'd recommend to do. Okay. And what about cleaning their eyes? So around their eyes, we don't want to mess with, again, their ears, eyes, and mouth if we don't have to. Mm-hmm. Now with their eyes, dogs like Bichon's, like Lizzie, can get normal you know, eye boogies and tear staining. Mm-hmm. Um, there's products you can get over the counter for tear staining, but for little cases like this where it's just some little boogers, you can have your partner hold on this side, and then you can hold here and you can just kind of brush away or pull away some of those tiny little boogers. Now we don't want to push at the eye or pick at the eye. That is most likely going to be a case where you just leave it alone and it'll fall off eventually. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and talk to us about cleaning your dog's teeth. How so often? Teeth are another tricky thing with dogs. Some dogs do not like it, so we recommend as you get them as puppies, if you've adopted them as puppies, to mess with their mouth as much as possible without getting hurt, but to make sure they're acclimated with you know you touching their mouth and their feet. Um, now, as they get older, or if you've adopted from a shelter and they're already set in their ways, it may be more stressful to them uh-huh. for you to you know brush their teeth. But if they're normal and they they're pretty complacent with you touching their mouth, you can get a doggy toothbrush or even a toothbrush over the counter, like a Colgate toothbrush. Put doggy toothpaste on it which you can get over the counter anywhere. This is not the only brand, there's so many of them. They're normally chicken flavored, which they love. And then (laughs) you'll start from the front teeth and work your way to the back with that toothbrush. Now again, you don't wanna push too far. You don't wanna push them to where they're hating it. That's how you clean the teeth, you good girl. Great, aw, Lizzie. You look way better, Lizzie. Good girl. Good. <laughs> yeah. And guys, when we're uh, got Lizzie all dried and completely groomed, we're gonna post a after a before and after photo of Lizzie. So be sure to check us out. Hey, Lizzie. Good girl. All right, guys. Well, that concludes our episode. Thank you, Lizzie and Elizabeth, You're for welcome. helping us groom. Our mascot, Lizzie. Thanks for joining us. Okay, you guys, we'll see you on Monday for an episode about dog anxiety. Next week is Dog Anxiety Awareness Week. So we'll see you guys for that episode on Monday at 2. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.